Imagine a $50 billion game of nuclear hot potato. That's what's happening in the United States right now with spent nuclear fuel. While America's lack of consensus on centralized storage location is proving to be costly, our northern neighbor Canada has just pulled off what many thought was impossible, finding a community that actually wants to host nuclear waste storage. Their breakthrough didn't come from force or politics, it came from treating communities as true partners in the process. Canada reached an agreement with the Wabagoon Lake Ojibwe Nation and the township of Ignis in northwest Ontario to host a permanent repository. This success stands in stark contrast to the United States' ongoing struggles with spent nuclear fuel storage. According to experts, maintaining the current nuclear waste system costs American taxpayers approximately $2 million each day. These daily costs come from maintaining security and monitoring at numerous storage sites, while also paying compensation to utility companies because the government hasn't fulfilled its promise to establish permanent storage. The Canadian approach differs from the US in three key ways. One, they moved the waste management outside of government bureaucracy. Two, they were transparent about the economic benefits for host communities. And three, gave these communities substantial input in the process. This consent-based siting approach has proven successful not only in Canada, but also in Finland and Sweden, where similar non-governmental entities manage nuclear waste storage. The U.S. has been at a stalemate since the controversial Yucca Mountain project in Nevada was effectively halted. While the Department of Energy has recently launched a process to find interim storage solutions, the Canadian success demonstrates that the challenge is primarily political rather than technical. In fact, the geological formation Canada plans to use, the Canadian Shield, extends into the United States, suggesting that suitable locations exist if the right political and organizational approach is taken. The situation is particularly pressing because many decommissioned reactor sites cannot be repurposed while storing waste, and the government continues to pay significant compensation to utilities for failing to fulfill its contractual obligations to accept spent fuel, which began in 1998. The Canadian model suggests that moving management to a non-governmental organization and establishing respectful partnerships with potential host communities could provide a path forward for resolving this decades-long challenge in the United States.